You can do the same thing for the internet. You can basically take a robot and send it out into the internet and make it jump from site to site via the hyperlinks. So you go to a site, you look at the hyperlinks, and go to the next site. There are some sites which have got lots and lots of links to them, popular sites. There are some which have just got one or two, and in the same way, you can build up a picture of the frequency of sites. So in this case, um, the nodes are World Wide Web documents, and the links between them are the URL links. Uh, well, I checked this morning, in fact, the size of the internet has not changed since that date. It's about 26 billion documents in it. Now then, what I said was, if you take a large number of throws of dice, then eventually the thing starts to be described by the normal distribution or the Poisson distribution. The internet has got 26 billion sites in it, a big number. So we would have thought that the central limit theorem ought to work. In other words, that the number of sites should be described by a distribution which looks like that. Well, it turns out that the average distance between any two sites in the internet picked at random is just six. If we ask what the probability is, given that we think it's described by a Poisson distribution or the normal distribution with an average of six, if we ask what the probability of getting a site with 500 links in it is, then it turns out to be, to all intents and purposes, zero. But we've got to multiply that by the size of the internet itself, which is about 26 billion. And that comes out to be still, well, effectively zero. So there are no sites if the internet is described by this distribution with more than 500 links in it. Well, in actual fact, there's over 1,000 sites which have got that number. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us that that distribution doesn't describe the internet. In fact, it's described by our old friend, the power law distribution again. We can look at the number of links going out of a site or the number of links coming into a site and we find again that they've got uh, a power law dependence and the index of the power law is a number kind of close to two. If we do the same calculation and say what's the probability for there being of the order 500 sites then this time it turns out to be a much, much larger number than the one we got when it was plus on. It's 10 to the minus 6. You multiply that by the number of sites in the internet and you get about 1,000. So it's telling you then that these power law distributions are actually quite ubiquitous and they occur when you're thinking about how things connect up. There's a picture of the router density of the internet. So what we've got here are nodes, and these are connections between nodes. The colors is telling you how heavy the traffic is of that. And it kind of looks organic. It looks as if it's something that has been grown. And in fact, that's precisely what it is. But if you look at the structure of it as well, it's got features which I was talking about when I was mentioning fractals. So we've got this big node here, but there's a, another copy of it here. Not quite the same, but nevertheless it's got the same kind of scaled down version of it. And there's a copy of it there, and there's another copy there. In other words, as we zoom in, we start to see more and more copies of the same thing. So it's a bit like the coastline, it's a bit like the Koch curve. And the reason for that is that the power law distribution is saying there is no characteristic scale size of the internet. There's another way that you can visualize these, uh, these pictures of the internet. There's another way of showing it. And, and again, it kind of looks organic. You've got these sort of uh, uh, 
nodes here which sprout other nodes. And that's not to be confused with uh, designer cauliflower. Are there other ways of thinking about it? Well, what would uh, a network look like which was Poisson distributed? Well, it's one where you look at the roadmap of, in fact, anywhere, it doesn't have to be the USA. You've got roads, the purpose of roads is, connect up, is to connect up towns. And a road is going to go from one town to the next. So it's telling you that you've got a very, very dense and localised network. That's the way that roads work. Something which is scale-free, which is given by uh, a power law distribution, is more like the network of airline links between cities. Not every town has got uh, an airport. It's only big hubs, so you've got New York, uh, where's this, Dallas, San Fran uh, San, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and so on. Uh, and you've got here, sorry, density of traffic, which is linking up these different nodes. So again, it's got this kind of uh, scale-free type behavior that you're seeing. This is a picture of um, maritime frequency of, of, of uh, uh, commercial traffic. And again, the, it's color-coded to show the, uh, the uh, amount of traffic that's happening you've got the major population centers being linked up. So those are the hubs which you've got most of the traffic flowing through. And all this other stuff here are local journeys connecting up uh, smaller hubs. And of course, these hubs obviously correspond to the place where the highest population density is. Here's a, a quite remarkable picture, which is essentially the picture of the world taken at night. So it's a composite picture. People have uh, uh, seen what the world looks like. So you're getting a, a picture here of the population density. And clearly, Europe, the States, Japan are very, very heavily populated. Places like Africa, Australia are much sparse, more sparsely populated. But you'll notice that there's some sort of uh, fractal-like behavior, if you follow that along there, anyone know what that feature is going right across Russia? It's the Trans-Siberian Railway. And if you look, there are spurs off it, like branches. So what we're seeing is that population centers are built around communication centers. <laughs> 